here to give you guys a review for I Love Hip Hop New York, Season 8, Episode 8, titled Catfish. I'm going to apologize, apologize in advance <laughs> because this is not going to be as thorough. There was, like, the very ending, it was just too much going on that I didn't have enough time to, like, truly dissect it. And there's a certain part that I'm going to get to momentarily that I thought was some bullshit, and it probably still is some bullshit, but next week let's convince him, but we, we going to talk about it, all right? So we got um <clears throat> James and uh, Sophia. So Sophia, I don't know if this is the first night that she slept over or whatever the case may be. She's uh, making breakfast. Uh, she said that uh, she's doing a favor, but that's all that it is. It is a favor. Um, <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not even. I'm not even gonna touch it because I know I have mostly female subscribers, and I mean, I'll be damned if I sit here and say the wrong damn thing, and then everybody getting their feelings because then I'm being, you know, filming this and all the other shit. But <clears throat> all I'm gonna say, actually, no, I'm. A, I'm a fucking say. It. If you stand with a motherfucker, that's the least that you can do. Like I said, there was a, <clears throat> a time that I was actually staying with a friend. And, you know, I said I was staying with her and her kids. So it was one of those since she was doing me a fucking solid. Like, I made sure that before the kids went off to school, because I worked nights. So I would pretty much come in, made sure that, you know, they had breakfast and whatnot before the kids went off to school. Before I left for work, I would make sure that there was dinner, whether it be in the oven or whatever. I made sure shit was done. You know, at least do my fucking part. You, you feel what I'm saying? Because, again, you... When you stand with a motherfucker, especially a friend, you got to tread lightly because they can kick your ass out when they name on the motherfucking lease. So that's all I'm saying, you know. Let me go ahead and make me another cup of coffee. <clears throat> Again, and I'm probably going to change up, like, how my fucking studio looks. Like, right now, I got the curate shit right here and whatnot, but I'm probably, because I have an area right behind which has my other TV and everything. That's probably my studio, so that'll be, like, my weekend project, even though my birthday is Saturday, but that's not why y'all here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, she, I swear, I, I, I can't do it with <clears throat> Sophia because you know, she ain't nothing but a gold digger. I don't know if he a broke nigga, but you know, she's just like, oh, well, you know, the surgery, you know, is going to cost a lot of money. Now, my thing is, is if you are Sophia got body, Sophia the thought is Sophia body, if you all these different things. Where your money coming from? You say you a DJ, but where's your money? Better yet, what the fuck does James do? Other, like, I got it, you're an artist, but you're up and coming. So what the fuck does he do that he can sit here and pay for these surgeries? Or maybe he'll, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know any fucking way. He invites her to his single release party called Bad Girl. And she's like, well, what is your, like, what is a bad girl? So his definition is somebody that is elegant of substance and is beautiful. That might be his definition, but uh, last time I checked, that's not really what a bad girl is, but okay. I'll let him have it. <clears throat> so, he wants her to be his uh, eye candy for the uh, video release. And, you know, she don't like that, you know, all this other stuff. Because I guess it doesn't look good to her. And, then, you know, she has to be the star because she is the star. And I'm sitting here like, Mona, if you don't get this heifer off of my damn TV screen, if I don't know nothing. Both of them together are fucking exhausting. Let me be very clear. Like, on some real shit, I was actually going to go up for her when she and Dream Dog got into it. I can't even do it. What the fuck? So then he asks her, what do you think of me? She's like, you're attractive, um, talented, um, a gentleman, um, you're a ladies man. I'm just like, how about you just keep it 100? You a stupid ass, soft ass motherfucker that, you know, I've used my feminine while I sit here and stay in your motherfucking place rent free and you finna sit here and pay me. I mean, just be honest, but whatever. And that's pretty much it. Now, the part that I feel bad that I'm, I really did not really write shit down for is the Jonathan and Trent fucking storyline. Because it truly looks like a storyline. And I don't know how I feel about next week. Because apparently, <clears throat> I guess, Trent is just like, oh, you want to see him play me on TV? I got something for your ass, Pimpin. I got something for your ass. Because he going to sit here and bring up a marriage license and Jonathan finna get all up in his feelings. 
I still don't know how to feel about the shit because I really do think that a lot of this is put on. But we shall surely see. But all I'm going to say is they go bike riding. And Trent opens up about his struggle. Don't know if it's real or not. Not one of the judges, but he pretty much said that he went to a line. I thought that he was going to get this big <clears throat> recording deal. Shit fell through. He came back to New York. Didn't have anything. So he was staying in a uh, men's homeless shelter. Uh, was eating food out of the trash can and whatnot. He refused to go back to, I think he said, Ohio to be a failure. And, you know, um, what's the John was just like, oh, I didn't know that about you. And, yeah, they dated and whatnot. But you don't see him just expose, you know, deep, dark suits like that. You feel what I'm saying? And I need them to clarify. This is truly something real. Are they really dating or are they in a relationship? And I think that they both probably should have defined both of those terms because to me, if I am dating you, for me, I can date whomever the fuck I want to in a vision to you. You feel what I'm saying? I even about the real households of Atlanta with Cynthia. Cynthia is dating more than one motherfucking person. Or she's dating you, but she's sitting here getting dick on the side. But when you are in a relationship, that's when, okay, it goes from all of this to this. Just clink, clink, lock down. So I don't fucking know. <clears throat> and later on episode, comments to get them knocked out right now. Jonathan pops up, you know, at the studio with Anais to surprise him. But I'm trying to figure out why you need Anais if you try to surprise your dude. But okay, I don't fucking know. And he was in the studio. So rather than Jonathan just let it go, of course, he needs a storyline. And he's already extra. He decides, hey, I'm going to sit here and create a fake profile and sit here and catfish my dude. Eventually, he does catfish him, and the whole thing was so put on because you you have to know that. this is why I feel a ways about it because he's sitting down at the restaurant. The producers, not producers, but the camera come over like, hey, he's walking in now. And Trent happens to be mic'd up. Like, this shit don't add up. It don't make sense to me, but it is what it is. And Trent ain't even trying to talk. He's walking off. He's embarrassed and whatnot. Jonathan is sitting here, and it as this is making himself look very, very foolish and whatnot. And it's like, if you cross the street, we're done. You're dead to me. Okay, this NIE shit again. Okay. So what else? All right, Juju, she is pushing this book, Secrets of You. She is pushing it. My thing is this, you better sit here <clears throat> and Candy Burris this motherfucking show. You better sit here every chance you get. And where the fuck is my damn date? I don't like my damn date. Huh? Oh, damn that is. I'm like, where the fuck is it? But, better Candy Burris the fuck out of there. Every chance she gets, she's sitting here talking about this damn book. Um, Segway, any of y'all fucking been read it? Y'all let me know. It's good. I just want to know. But she um is uh, turning the book to a stage play. She uh is sitting down with Safari because she wants him to audition for it. He says he's going to do it. Safari accidentally double booked. And I don't think he necessarily double booked. I think he just didn't allow himself enough time to sit that with Juju and Walks My Dudes. Uh, Juju uh, gets up, gives my deuce a seat. She trying to figure out who it is, <laughs> and he pretty much explained like, you know, she wants me to be a part of her play this and the third. <clears throat> and she pretty much says to him like, you need to be more focused when it comes to your music because she asked him is he dating somebody. He says yes. She's just like, when you sit here and chase these little young girls and whatnot, your ass get distracted from the music, from making the money and shit. And um, you know. They pretty much end with him saying that, well, with her saying, oh, and you know her right there? That's what you need to be bringing home to see me. And he's like, I ain't bringing Dream Doll home to see her no time soon. So, let me see. You got Jaquay, Self, and Snoop. Long story short, James R. has tagged all three of them. In, to include Mariah Lynn, which we'll get to momentarily, but tagged all of them in his uh, video release party. So I don't know if this was a Mona Me production or if it was simply one of those where, I mean, he just needs more drama. I guess I guess he's really trying to come back for next season. I'm telling y'all, this is, you know, Cisco 2.0. Let me tell you. 
So we have Marilyn, Bianca, and a girl named Cayenne. Marilyn has a uh, lingerie party because she wants to show off her titans. She take a page out of Le Kim's book and has some little pastels, you know, on, on the te- on the tittery area and shit. And they sit down and they talk. Marilyn uh, brings up that she wants to pop up on James R. at his event. Bianca pretty much tells her, I can't in good taste tell you not to do it because I'm the same person that sit here and pop up on motherfuckers and all this, that, third. So I can't tell you in good conscience not to do it. And pretty much what she's saying is that it's not that I can't tell you. It's not going to be right if I tell you knowing that I'm a fucking hypocrite myself. I understand that. And Cayenne, even though, so Mariah Lynn has Bianca explain what she meant. So she talked about, you know, rolling up on um, Brie. And Cayenne, you know, pretty much just like, you know, I fell out with the bitch too because she said that I was copying her. I was her protege. This, that, and the third. And again, I keep saying, Brie ain't been on this fucking show for like the past two, three episodes. The more they talk about, like, literally, y'all are cementing her spot on this show because y'all continue to bring her up. Y'all continue to make her a topic of discussion. Y'all are making her relevant. So she's probably going to come back next season, probably on her grind because y'all are giving her this fucking platform. I'm not on reality television, and I can tell y'all right now, y'all to feel reality television one-on-one, like on some real shit. They need to sit here and do what Quad on Mary the Medicine did to Mariah. Sit here, because <clears throat> however you want to feel, Quad didn't like Mariah. She pretty much made it to where nobody was going to film with Mariah. They kept her name to a fucking minimum, hence why she is a friend of a friend of the motherfucking show. Play the motherfucking game. This review is actually going to be longer than what I thought it was. I, okay, I'm proud of myself. Pat myself on the back. So, Juju is doing this play. Rehearsals. Auditions. All I'm going to say is this. Mona and the rest of y'all. I don't know if y'all believe in the Lord. Me and Jesus ain't talked in many a moon. Okay, I talked to the Father. Me and Jesus ain't talked in many a moon. But even though I ain't talking to Jesus, I'm not finna walk up in, you know, the church house and sit here and do all this damn fuck shit. I ain't finna do it. You really mean to tell me that there there ain't no auditoriums? You can't sit here and go to an elementary school and be like, hey, can I borrow your motherfucking gymnasium? I'ma sit here. We gonna spend five seconds show where where the the fuck we at. Y'all some, but y'all really go into the church house. It's the second damn motherfucking time y'all done went to the motherfucking church house on this particular fucking season. I'm done. That's all the fuck I'm going to say. Fuck you, mom. And then the video release. This is the part where I really did not get everything. But uh, James Alperma said, you know, this is my release. My bad girl isn't here. Now, Jacque, I don't know what the fuck he was smoking. If he sipped the Kool-Aid, I don't know what he was like. But where's she at? I'm looking at him just like, okay, you looking real thirsty. Real, you, I, I was confused. I'm just like, I know you trying to fuck with him, but you seem hurt. Like, for real, for real. And, you know, Schnoob is just like, you know, well, two birds of a feather, feather. I'm pretty sure she said flop. Not flop. Flop. Together. I was like, you know what, Stu. So then he walked over to his boy. I forget old boy name. I think he's only been on, like, here and there, but you know, give him dab and shit, talking about this my dude, and he's like, I, and I think he said you brought the ops with you, I think that's what he said, I'm not absolutely sure, Snoop felt some kind of way, and literally rolled up on this motherfucker like she was gonna fucking swing and shit, and then, you know, security get involved, and then next thing I know, <clears throat> Jock Quading got involved some way, somehow, and saying you bully, right, and all this other shit, and then they go off there. I'm going to just chalk it up to editing because that shit, it just didn't make sense. Maybe just maybe next episode, they're going to do kind of like, they're probably going to start the confrontation off from the beginning and maybe we'll see how everything develops so it makes sense to me. But I gave y'all a long review on this shit because actually I was just going to speak through it. It is what it is, but that is my review for Love Hip Hop New York Season 8, Episode 8 called Catfish. Um, <clears throat> I'm about to get ready for work. 
like I said, I know my I, everything looked a little crazy. Like I did get my hair cut, as y'all can see. You know, it's just not it's not picked out. You know, I okay now I'm looking real funny. Let me fix this. But y'all probably gonna sit here and talk shit on the motherfucker. But I'm about to go ahead and put this little you know um replenish pack in my in my hair. Let it sit for a minute. Get ready. Go to work. You know, it's a lot of work. You know. Fixing this do up and whatnot, but that's it. That's all I got. So please rate, comment, subscribe, and share. You know, thank y'all so much for watching. All that good shit. I will see you guys. Uh, I think the next review for me is Little Women Atlanta. Yep, that's all I got. Peace.